Hello YouTubers, welcome to Scorpion Venom Studio Games. In this video I'm going to continue with exporting my project from Blender into the Unreal Engine. I have my project set and ready to be exported and I will work more on textures in the future and any walls that are missing or are not complete that's going to be done later as well. As of right now I want to import these models into the game and see what they would look like on my island. Let's go ahead and press file, export, and then I'm gonna do FBX format. I'm gonna choose the folder, which is Egyptian Blender. I'm gonna go back to Unreal Engine over here, and then back into here, the folder of Egyptian Blender, and I'm gonna name this Egyptian City, so I know. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and export FBX. All right, so the project has been exported as an FBX into my folder over here, Egyptian City FBX. It is about 92 megabytes. And my materials gonna remain. I've actually changed my uh, mossy texture that if you've been following my YouTube channel and if you saw me create this tech uh, material with materialize and Quixel, I've changed quite a couple things here. I've deleted a uh, layer of the roots. They're no longer there. I've uh, left the mossy texture, but I've also added a, a multiplier to my out outer layer of the mossy texture so now it's a little bit more green uh, I figured since you know this Egyptian city has been out there on the island for hundreds if not thousands of years and um, it got not only covered with the grassy moth but also the stone itself has turned a little bit of a greenish color so I've added a multiplier to it and uh, back into the B, um, B channel into the lerp of the main channel and again this is a two-sided uh, material so when you look inside uh, this is the remaining color of the interior I kept it the same and uh, this is my blueprint right here uh, it's still gonna get developed as we build stuff as I build stuff but I will keep these textures or materials and I will keep the textures that I've have set in here now, uh, this is the new one right here. I separated in the individual folder. I might actually do that for all of them. And the only thing I'm going to delete now is meshes. And I've spent a lot of time, actually, almost three to four days, as every night sitting till three, four o'clock in the morning, uh, creating all these, you know, trying to s align them together and put all the textures together and resize all the meshes. And even put everything in folders and now I'm unfortunately have to delete all this because just because I was not aware that I had to put all this in Blender first and here's a couple of reasons why first of all these buildings that I have set up um, they're not 100% uh, leveled together so if you see my previous videos I have the couple pieces here that create this structure. So we have the front. Well, maybe it's not a good example, but actually, uh, I think it is. Yeah. Like if you look at the wall structure here, um, let's see what would be a good example of. Well, I think I worked on the temples right here. So here's my temples. Uh, I'm actually going to look on this one instead. So here's the uh, good example of one of those structures. These walls. I don't think they're 100% uh, properly set up because I was doing it all manually. I mean, some of the stuff looks pretty good, but I don't want to risk it here. Like if you look on the bottom, there's a, a gap here, and I don't think that the new one that's in the a blender, it doesn't really have that, and I'm going to double check it. But again, you know, I was trying to line this up as close as I could, and I still didn't do that great of a job. So I'm going to delete all these models and make it actually look right. So not only goes to the temples, but look at the statues as well. These are 100% uh, models straight from Kitbash, downloaded as an FBX format. 
and I didn't even do anything to it except added the textures and even then uh, a lot of models look at this uh, missing a nose it's missing eyes it's missing a part of the ear part of the top of the head uh, textures don't line up properly and if you actually look at the blender um, I gotta get used to uh, <laughs> the movement here so if I were to look at one of these models, the same one, if I actually can find it, I think it's right here. Here's the same model, not only in Blender. This is imported without really doing any um, changes. And it has a nose, it has pretty cool eyes, it has the top, and it textured everything correctly. So the only thing I see now here is um, some of the texture doesn't really look right like right here and this is uh, probably due to not doing the UV editing and unwrapping the textures so I'll get to that later I mean this is right now I'm importing this so I can start building a level I can always go back and um, re-import this individual pieces to the blender and work on each UV but it's gonna be in the future because I don't want to be stuck doing this for a few months of the project because I have other things coming along and I have to test other projects so unfortunately with game development I can't be 100% accurate of everything at the moment this is something that needs to be recorded on the side and I will go over back in the future you know this is something that's recorded not only on youtube but also uh, i can keep a track of it uh, on my notes that i need to go back and fix some of this stuff so here of course i'll have to just delete all of this and replace it with a new fbx format from blender and see how they export to this uh, unreal engine and uh, what they would look like on my island so what i'm gonna do is i'm going to leave the FBX meshes here for a minute and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new folder I mean I'm gonna call it meshes uh, let's see mesh meshes uh, let's see let's call it Egyptian Egyptian city meshes for now, I mean, I can always rename it later, but I want to import that in here. And you definitely don't want to import it just straight over here because then you'll have all the models there. I want to keep it all in one folder. And I'm going to do import to game building and structure Egyptian city, pressing that button. <coughs> ah, shoot, excuse me. I didn't know I was going to do that. I was trying to hold it off. <clears throat> Goodness, sorry guys, just sneezing in your ears. All right. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I can probably edit this out. Uh, right, so we have Egyptian City here. I'm going to import that. Now it's going to import Egyptian City and it's going to ask me to do the import options. I'm going to keep everything the same way. And I've, like I mentioned before, if my models are not properly set up, I'll have to change the Y rotation from 0 to 0.01. But as of right now, I think everything is done correctly, so I'm going to keep everything at zero. And import uniform scale is at one. And I think that's it. Local uh, material, search location, local, uh, all assets, search for materials, all assets folder. Uh, this is something that I should definitely test out and see which one is correct, so I don't have to assign each material individually but uh, I'm not too familiar with the actual import of the materials. Uh, it says material import, create new materials, uh, import textures, let's see, import normal maps. Uh, I probably should, uh, oh, it's in, I'm sorry, it says inverted. Okay, so search location local, uh, search for matching materials in local import folder only. I'll say search for ma matching materials in all assets folders. I think I should choose that. And I, I hopefully it will... Actually, you know what? No, well, let's just do local because I want that to import from the actual blender. And I'm just going to say import all. Now I'm going to have to wait. I'm going to pause the video and until it's done because it's going to take a while for it to import all these models. Even though it was only 92 megabytes for FBX, but uh, there's just a lot of models and it's going to take quite a bit. Alright, so my Egyptian City models have been imported successfully and now they're in my Egyptian City meshes folder 
and it looks like all of them have textures. Now, what I would like to do is compare the sizes, and I'm going to go back to, actually, you know what, let's go ahead and drop this one in, the Anubis. I want to see if it actually, oh goodness, it's so tiny, small. Let's increase the speed. Goodness, it's so tiny, you can't even see it. So it looks like I'll have to, oh, there it is. Oh, wow. Look at the distance from where it's uh, positioned. So it's all the way under the world while uh, positioning. Holy crap, look at that. Okay, so what I need to do is use my pivot tool underneath over there and then bake it. Pretty much the same whole step process of what I had to do with the pivot tool. Uh, bring them all uh, to the bottom of the model right here. And uh, yeah, it's unfortunate that I have to do that, but if you look at it, uh, the size of them are actually pretty decent. So at least one step I um, might not need to even do, but let's lower that in the ground just a bit. And let's go ahead and import the Sphinx. I'm going to do the same thing. It's probably somewhere under there, and I'm going to go ahead and press underneath. Oh, I don't like that it's... Uh, being brought all the way back there. Goodness, so much work. But what I'll do is I'll just have to do for all of them and then bake it. And then what I can even do later down the road is delete it and then uh, redrop it again. But here is an example of the Sphinx, right? And what I'm going to do is go back to my previous meshes of my other statues in the Sphinx that I originally set up this was at um, the size 100 I think and look at that they're almost the same size if I were to put it so I guess that not bad actually <laughs> you know what let's bring them together they almost uh, they actually look almost the same really in size but this is the older model and again I'm gonna get rid of it because I do not want to mess with it and here is Oh, you know what, I, I keep forgetting that I have a camera set up so high. So here is my model from the Blender. And I'm going to jump in the FBX format from the, for the Unreal Engine. Let's do the comparison real quick. Let's drop it down. Let's uh, make it a bigger screen. Actually, let's just do press play and, look, and see what it would look like in the gameplay itself. We were to be in the world and once it loads it up sometimes it takes a while since i'm uh, recording and playing the game at the same time plus i have all right cool so here's our uh, original dog and the funny part is it has nostrils and you can see through them again i wonder why it's weird uh, i'll have to fix that model or you know put something on it but it's funny you can uh, see inside the dog but not on the inside, what I'll do is I'll make sure the texture has a double on the inside that's texture too. So you can't see through the nose, but <laughs> this is the original model. So I'll just have to replace it with a new texture that has a double side. So that way, when you look inside the nose, you can actually see the texture and not the grass. I don't know if you guys can see it, but if you look at the nose, you can see the grass through it. But hey, at least the nose is in. Um, this neck looks pretty good with textures. Um, it doesn't miss uh, completely the nose or the eyes or part of the neck or the ears. So it's pretty cool. And look, the sides are actually, I guess, it's pretty good. It's, I think they're the same. So that being said, I'm very happy that uh, this whole process has been somewhat completed without any further issues. Uh, of course, disappointing, I lost almost a week of work doing all this. But... You know, sometimes you go to sacrifices to learn more about this stuff. But one more thing. Here is my mesh. I keep going the wrong materials. Here is my Sphinx, and I would like to replace it with this new texture uh, material that I have. And again, you know, it's a work in progress. I might even get this uh, green stuff out. It kind of looks too greenish, really. But once I put uh, foliage on top of it, you know, the... 
vines that's overgrown and palm trees growing next to it and uh, de debris of uh, wood and things like that. It's going to look not that bad. And like I said, you know, think of this as it's been here for quite some, some time. Uh, the grass is going to be changed too, so it's not going to look anything like it. It's going to be a different. Um, there's going to be par parts of this structure probably going to be covered in the ground. So not all of it even going to be exposed. You know, I might have a mountain going up to the top of it. Uh, there might be a secret button that you have to press to go inside of the structure. And, you know, maybe find some sort of a relic or, you know, a map or gold. Or, you know, there's going to be so many cool things that you'll be able to do. Different puzzles. You know, maybe you'll have to get to the top of it or something like that. And then, you know, find something else on it. But, again, I'll have vines growing all, you know, on each every single uh, structure so it's not gonna look as bad as it does now I mean it's not bad really I mean I'm kind of happy with the result but again I, I might you know took a little bit of texture make it a little bit maybe brighter but the idea was to make it look like it's been here for um, you know hundreds if not thousands of years in the jungle and again you know it's gonna be more rocks piled up around it there's gonna be other structures built and uh, having something like this uh, maybe I'll have it in the future where there's a storyline where the so-called aliens go back in time to the actual Egypt and, you know, they take the whole chunk of the city and then they just teleport it in, onto this island. That's the whole idea of all these cultures, how they're going to come here. And uh, hopefully as a player, you'll be able to either uh, watch a video trailer in the game or hopefully, possibly even participate in the gameplay itself being able to do that but the idea is to bring all these cultures to protect all these stones and uh, they have to be somewhat close to each other in a way and they have powers and that's why they um, come from a different world to this land uh, of course not intentionally but uh, well you know what uh, them crashing on the island uh, is unintentional to crash because uh, they're in the middle of, of war but uh, the coordinates to this location is intentional for them and then once they um, come to this island they all gonna take a stone and then go their different directions and different time of time periods and different locations around the world and bring these cultures in for their uh, you know, purposes, so, you know, for the protection of each stone and things like that. Some of these cultures obviously going to fall over time because uh, they're going to have conflicts between each other, even though, you know, their job is to protect the stones. I mean, that's something that they'll do, but, you know, with evil being present in, uh, you know, in humans and different species, um, you know, hunger for power and things like that, there's going to be conflict between all of them. Not only that, but live on the island and uh, possibly these aliens going to die so there's going to be not too much uh, traveling going on but the, re the other way that other species are going to be still coming here so once the plane crash and that's the, one of the reasons why you're going to be here and um, following cultures in general that's going to come to it uh, there's going to be a mechanism that's going to be built on this island by the aliens and that will create a portal where these cultures will come but they cannot escape or leave so this is going to be something interesting for all the characters to experience to play and you know try to get out that's going to be one of the main uh, storylines as well as a main character you will try to escape this place or at least try to you know find a way out you can say and this is something that's going to be possible, but in order for you to do that, you'll have to be able to find it. And one more thing that I would like to implement in the game is that when the stones um, come to this island, um, there's going to be a certain amount of them. But the part, the interesting part is it's going to be every time you start a new game, it's going the location of it is going to be somewhat in the area, but it's always going to be in different spots. So that way when you start a new gameplay, it's not the same. Uh, and again, the reason for that is there's a lot of YouTubers out there in the world that play video games and then, you know, they go out there, play the game, and then they show the world where to find certain parts. Well, I mean, it's cool on one end, but at the same time, you as a player, I would like each individual to play the game and be able to experience those things yourself, uh, not only f as watching and trying to find a way, but also um, 
have a more unique experience. You know, I mean, I personally would like to play the game, and every time I play it, you know, certain things will appear in different spots, and it's going to be uh, just a different a feel to it and a different environment. So uh, this is something that I would like to add to the game as well. Now, this pyramid is either crooked or I have... Uh, the ground that's completely crooked. Hey, again, I'll go back to this later. I'm just kind of talking here and trying to show what's going on. But yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited with uh, what we can build here, what I can actually do with this uh, location. What I'll probably do is I'm going to delete my old folder with meshes. And then I'm going to obviously keep this one right here. I will not build a city right away because now I know these these buildings are good uh, now only one thing I have to do is if you look on the bottom left here it has a star I'm just gonna left click here and then hold shift and uh, I guess select all and save or control s to save it all um, I will see if I need to keep these textures or if they need to be replaced with uh, my other ones because I don't know if these uh, meshes are dedicated to that so I'll just go through it already like I've done it before off the screen and then once once I get back to it I will continue with uh, either Japan Roman Empire and the native uh, culture that I have here that's going to be uh, what do you call it the protectors of the island so this is another step that I'll have to go through the blender first and then once I finish that I will be able to build my own structures and again I have my, more projects coming uh, this is like you know four of the main ones that I have to focus on finish doing this properly uh, well in this I guess scenario it's for orcs I keep saying for the protectors of the island when I'm actually using a, a project from Unreal Engine but it's gonna be actually used for orcs and the reason for that is because of the meshes they look very violent and uh, you know just aggressive so I think that's something that will fit uh, our culture in, in general but uh, you know maybe there will be a mix in between and that being said I will also be a, adding a different ocean and you can see I don't have it anymore here and uh, that's just to see what looks better I'm still gonna keep the blueprints of you know floating objects and boats and things like that uh, from the previous project but the uh, ocean waves and things like that, I will still see if uh, you know this is something worth keeping or not. Uh, but I will be adding a completely different ocean into this uh, world just because it looked a little bit different and something that I was expecting. But again, it's hard to tell unless you try them out uh, yourself. And then after that, I will be able to um, work on the ocean corals. This is something that I want to touch up and go over with um, not just the meshes, but how to create more of these and uh, create different you know meshes in general you know different variations uh, using uh, prefabricator uh, it's a pretty cool tool that I got so I've been learning that as well so there's a lot of projects come along and then once I be able to populate the ocean and then go over a little bit with vegetation and populate the island I'll be able to start setting up the world with these structures now I will think more about it if I should put the structures in first then do the population or I keep saying population but you know populate the island with the vegetation or populate the vegetation first and then create the you know invisible boxes to not render a certain location and then re-add you know materials to it later but I think I'll be placing the structures first and then populate the world and then on top of each mesh I can create an invisible box so that way it doesn't spawn uh, trees and things like that so as of right now grass can remain the same again I'm gonna have somebody help me out with this hopefully with changing all the grass um, I don't really like the grass look of it because it's so um, pixelated I have way better grass in the world uh, even actually in this project here like landscape I have under mega scans uh, things like that so you, you look at the some of the different variations like here we have a dental lines. Uh, you know things like that I'll be able to add to the game and if you look at the quality of it it's it's pretty good texture you know quality of the texture is definitely more realistic and, and it moves as well I mean I'm not saying that this grass doesn't but this is just grass uh, I mean I don't know I don't really like it the fact that the 
it's I just have better stuff, and I have a lot of it really. I have way more than this. There's so many more other projects that I have in my inventory that it's um, it's huge. It's huge uh, library of stuff that will be added to the game, uh, different trees and things like that. Um, I wish I could find one project that I got. It has, I think, over like 600 right here. I think Flower and Plant uh, Natural Pack. I think this is the one I'm talking about. And if you open this up, I have uh, over 760 uh, high-quality static mesh, of which contains 648 flowers and plants, 28 vegetable supply elements, and 84 environment models. So if you look at this project right here itself, I mean, this is the colors that not colors but you know the colors of the flowers that you'll see different vegetation that will be in the game too this is all the models i already have and again with the hopefully with the uh, foliage tool that i'll be able to create some pretty cool landscapes with this some of it's going to be random you know some of the stuff is going to be set up in certain location for uh, food growing uh, gardens in the egyptian city you know they're very into uh, beautiful garden so it's going to be a lot of cool stuff that i'll be covering as a build unfortunately just going to take me a very long time to get to it since i spent a lot of time creating uh, video content and also you know just learning different programs but again there's a lot of content that was going to be get covered over a period of years of working on this game and uh, covering each individual project will be pretty cool not only that but i'll be able to leave a link to these projects to the marketplace where you can buy them and also when you go to write a review or just go into under regular reviews you'll always see my name popping up here and you know leaving a review regarding the project uh, me personally i'm an artist in general like i like art i like drawing i like painting and things like that and this is a 3d art for me so I personally don't have time to create all of these models from scratch. So if anybody who's watching the video and is saying, oh, why are you spending so much money and trying to, you know, buy all this stuff when you can create everything from scratch? Well, to be fair, I don't have time for it. <laughs> I just don't have time to sit here and create every single model because that, that would take years uh, to create all the content I have. Now I have everything I need. And the best part with this is even if some of the stuff, it might be, you know, 4K resolution or stylized or it's not 100%, um, you know, uh, a great quality or some people would might say, oh, it's blocky. Well, the best part with this is you can always import these projects into the Blender and, you know, make it a little bit more smooth, add more edges to it and... Uh, using Quixel Mixer and all these other pro programs that have hundreds of thousands of these different uh, textures, I'll be able to create something a little bit different. You know, the idea is to utilize other people's work and create something of your own. So don't need to sit there and create everything from scratch. Yes, there are certain things that might need to be created from scratch, uh, something in particular that you're working on, but in my style of game development, I find it much easier and more convenient using other people's projects that's already been done and putting them together like clay. Uh, here's the, the example that I was talking about, you know, using these vines uh, to, you know, build on top of all these different structures. So. You know, yes, I spent a lot of hours cutting these doors out and for the Egyptian city, but the best part about it is you can't really find anything that's Egyptian related on the marketplace here. There's a couple projects you can find for like $50 each, and I've already looked into it, um, but they're nothing close to what I got. And again, uh, that was just complete unnecessary step that I had to go through, like even from the standpoint of a kid bash like I don't understand why they had to do that like that is just extra stuff that is just so tedious and it turns off the customers you know what I mean like it makes me not want to buy any more projects but hopefully that's something that they can learn from and not do I just don't understand why they had to do it even for if it's not used for video games for movies it's just completely unnecessary and here's some pretty cool um, moss textures that I have not even textures they're materials or meshes should I say and um, they're like mossy piles. So things like this will be added to all these structures that I've been talking about. So I'll have textures on top of different meshes and a couple other pretty cool stuff. So it's going to be a very unique uh, environment, really. I've never seen Egyptian city in the jungles, but uh, this is something interesting and new.
So uh, some of these characters that even come free from Unreal Engine will be added to the game as well. And here's my pivot tool that I've been trying to use. So there's other tools I'm trying to implement and use. Uh, right, so I've mentioned physical water. So here is a physical water surface that I've had previously and I've used a lot and I've made quite a lot bit of videos on it. I am keeping the buoyancy blueprint and I'm still probably going to use all the blueprints for the ocean. But what I would like to use really or try to use is I got a new project right here. At the, I think it's somewhere at the top right here. Advanced Water Material it's called. And this was really cheap compared to spending $50 on that project. Uh, again, uh, of course, that one had quite a lot of different blueprints and codes. A lot of work has been put into that. Uh, it's definitely a good project. But I found this very interesting. Uh, what caught my eye was, one, the translucency of the water. It seems like it's already been set. The second part is a calm uh, ocean uh, not even the ocean, but the surface of the beach right here, the tra transition between the depth of the ocean to the surface of it. You can see that this transition coming in, and then there's small waves coming in and out, so maybe I can use that previous code, uh, blueprint from the other game to add this to the ocean. Uh, of course, uh, the water looks flat and motionless, but you can edit certain things, like you can edit the colors, and it looks like there's waves appearing, uh, depending on how you set it up, but again, there is a uh, once you watch the trail, uh, the video of it, you can adjust on how the water coming coming into the edge of the ocean uh, to the surface of the beach, and this is what caught my eye. And this was only like uh, I think it was like five or six bucks I paid for it. So definitely a difference in big prices, you know. I mean, comparing to different projects. Very excited to try it out. And here's the airplane that I've mentioned in my previous video. I showed you the interior of it from my website. But I never posted anything on the exterior of the plane. So here's an example of it to what it would look like. And uh, this is going to be something that you'll see at the airport. Uh, again, I don't personally have an airport right now set up, but it's going to be more of a, either a video trailer that you'll be able to see that you go into the plane, or you're going to be already on the plane flying, uh, similar to like the forest game. Uh, the funny part is when I used to be in college developing video games, I made a video game literally similar to the forest, and about three to four years later, uh, maybe even more, maybe like five or six, really. Uh, the Forest game itself came out after that, which was very interesting because I made a game where it was a plane crash on the island and there was a tribe that you had to fight. And literally five years later, the game came out just like that. And the difference was my game was in 2D platform base, but this one was in 3D, so I was kind of impressed to see a gameplay like that. And now there's more games coming out with the survival modes on the island. So... That being said, I'm not trying to copy anyone really. This is like something that originally had years ago, and now looking at the real engine that I've never really touched before, this, I literally started using it back in summer of 2019. I've gotten very uh, interested in using it and learned that there's a lot of different models and projects that are being sold in the marketplace so this is the reason i started doing it because there's just more stuff available now than it was five six years ago when i was in college doing game design and again i was taught to do everything from scratch for you know literally from character development to um, building weapons and things like that and i just thought it was too tedious and it was just not for me here's a character customization that's going to be added to the game you'll be able to customize your own characters uh, from you know, the body types and hair and things like that. This is something that you'll choose in the beginning of the game uh, for the female version and for the male. You see, I keep going back when I should just go like this. And then uh, there is a character for male customization as well will be available. And I already have all these projects. This is in my library. I know it says Marketplace, but it is actually in my library. And because it says right here, create a project, I write a review, it doesn't say buy. And it's in my library right here. And it's going to be a very interesting uh, setup. Like I said, there's going to be the corals, the customization movement like you would do in uh, Assassin's Creed. So you'll be able to climb uh, different locations. I've actually tested out this project too. Behind the scenes was actually really cool. I'm excited to try this out. So these little cubes going to be set up for every single 3D mesh uh, material that I have uh, that I set up. Not material, but mesh. 
buildings and things like that so you'll be able to climb like you would in Assassin's Creed. Now it's going to be as great as Assassin's Creed, but you know, the idea is that you'll be able to climb hopefully trees, buildings, uh, structures in general, so that way uh, it's more uh, flexible for you to move around. Uh, right now I have Darius uh, working with different characters and things like that and he's adding dynamic locomotions to the characters. I was blown away seeing all these uh, animations, pretty cool stuff, very excited to see them. Um, he gave me a project related to the survivors of the plane crash. Uh, I have about 10 characters on there. I'm not sure how many he actually sent it to me, but uh, that was the original pack that comes actually with the Unreal Engine Marketplace. And uh, we'll be showing you guys that as well very soon. Uh, once I finish doing some of my things and setting that up, I will get to that as well, hopefully very soon. So yeah, uh, this is something that just felt like throwing it out there to you guys and showing more information. Here's that scan 3D people that I was talking about. So these guys are going to be on the plane. Are they going to be children in the game? I've mentioned that previously in my videos. I'm not sure. We'll think about that depending on how violent the game is. But um, yeah, these characters, uh, I think most all of them already been animated. And uh, they share the same animations as of right now and in the future. Based on their physique, based on their um, body structure and what they carry and things like that, their animation will change. And now that's something in the future to work on. Um, but as of right now, there's other characters that still needs to be worked around with and other models, and different weapons and things like that. So here's a quick uh, look at the, some of the jungles that I will have in the game. And again, these are all 3D models. Uh, some of these are test uh, maps that are available. So every time I will be going over a project that's available in the marketplace i will try to open their level and show you what they look like and also show what i'll be using in my uh, game now here if you're not familiar with this this is a shader complexity right here at the top you can change that in your unreal engine excuse me so it says lit and then a thing of you can go over where is that at um lit and then you can change to um, I think it's somewhere here. I'm trying to remember where it's at. I think it's one of these um, visualized. No, light only, reflection plate. I know it's a level of detail. I think, hold on. I thought I knew where it was. I think it's somewhere under lit here. What is it called? Oops. Wrong stuff. I'm actually literally watching one of the YouTubers right now. Uh, his name is Weird History. If you guys are actually into history in general, check it out. This is how I'm actually learning all of my um, ideas for the game. Well, not really all the ideas. All of these came from my head. But understanding all the cultures. So right now I'm watching what life was like as a samurai in feudal Japan. <clears throat> because I will be going over the Edo Japan um, structures. Now it says right here, shader complexity. So I know it's somewhere here. Shader complexity. Oh, I've done this before. I know it's uh, right here. So it's up under optimization, view models, and you can do um, shader complexity. And what it does is anything that's green, it's good. And everything that's as white as obviously is bad. And then, well, extremely bad. And everything that's red, it's uh, no good. So our pyramids and the grass look pretty good. Uh, the ground itself, uh, the, I guess the texture itself is pretty bad, and everything that's far away is bad as well. I guess is the distance, so we, we might have to do some calling, but again, remember, there's going to be trees and everything, so you're not going to be able to see as far, some of the stuff, but again, it's just, um, you can keep track of uh, how heavy um, the stuff are shown on the screen. And um, here is an example that shows you, and again, this is a quad overdraw. But going back to my uh, Japanese culture, you might be thinking, why am I even looking into that? I mean, I know I've mentioned it before, but here are my, some of my samurai characters that I have. And I cannot wait to actually see how they actually look like in game. It's going to be so cool to actually be able to play. Now, of course, in a single player, uh, you might not be able to play as them. Uh, well, you'll probably have to fight them or be um, allies with them. Maybe you'll get a chance to play one of them or 
in a storyline mode, but it's mostly going to be available in the different modes of the game. So, like, let's say if you have battles set up on the island somewhere, you can play as one of these characters, um, you know, through the entire mode play. If it's a capture the flag or something, or a multiplayer, you'll be able to do that. But in single player, maybe there's going to be one or two. Mainly, it's going to be focused on the 3D uh, scan people right here. Uh, which is the people from the plane and uh, that's how the story is going to start off and again as we develop the game maybe there will be different sections you can start off so like it might not have to be necessarily a plane crash maybe you can start playing a gameplay from their perspective you know from their clan or from the you know the spartans uh, side or you know the orcs or whoever so depending on how far we're going to go with this game maybe there's a lot of stuff that we can add and again here we have another example japanese furniture so even though I have all these buildings, you have to have furniture in them, uh, and their culture is going to be alive, so it's going to be all nice and clean. And uh, like I've mentioned, gardens going to be built around, you know, the structures, buildings, things like that. It's going to be implemented, so I'm trying to make sure I cover all these stuff and. Uh, without disrespecting any culture again this is going to be just a video game most of the stuff is made up on the spot so i don't know too much about the cultures yet uh, i am learning quite a lot of, about the egyptians about you know the japanese culture trying to learn more about um, what was the other one i have the vikings so there's a lot of stuff that's involved but again as a few people develop developing the game it's kind of a lot of information you have to utilize other people um knowledge and talent and one of the guys is a uh, weird history he is saving me a lot of time just watching and understanding each culture it talks about you know the samurai it talks about the vikings talks about all the battles and there's a couple other guys that are uh, there's one more guy that i follow also does a similar concept but again it saves me time instead of going out there somewhere online trying to find all this information this individual does a really great job on doing so and as you can see he has over 1.3 million subscribers so obviously uh, his stuff is pretty good and uh, I do enjoy watching it too it's I'm more of a visual guy than sitting there and reading uh, some people like doing that uh, not my style really I like visual information better and that's why I do YouTube channel guys so that being said I'm gonna end this video here and I uh, will continue with uh, obviously fixing all of this with my building structure so i'm gonna rearrange all of everything that i need to do in here obviously i'm gonna delete all these folders and i'm gonna re-import everything brand new again so that being said i just want to thank everybody for watching my youtube channel thank you for all the new subscriptions uh, don't forget to like the video if you liked it and don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell button if you want to be notified every time i upload the video until next time guys and thank you for all your support.